Hello. There was rain. There was no drain. So needs must. The ball was red and white, but they played like the kit was red and the ball was white. The head of the cricket association was there, but not with a pitch dryer. He had a fork and was eating papaya. And then there was Sharmaji Kabeta. Told his boys, wield that bat like a fursa. His World Cup mentality just smashed the ball. Forget recency bias, this wasn't Baz ball. Practical, adaptable, batting. So Wagian in spirit. Quick, hit the runs, we can take the wickets. It was horses for courses. Just cricket with cojones. Cojones the size of butterballs. Welcome to the Kumble Corner. Um, I'm Super Joshi, joined by Knuckle Pandey. Before we go any further, let's just remind you to hit subscribe below if you're watching this on YouTube or follow wherever you are getting this uh, on your podcast app, Spotify or anything else. So Bangladesh, thank you. Tata, bye bye. Well played. Don't cry. Knuckle uh, Pandey. Wow, 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 Joshi G, Joshi G, wow, wow, wow. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't one, expecting that, but, but um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> one, wonderful. In case you are wondering if you've stumbled into that uh, poet rap battle in Mughal Azam, uh, then uh, yes, a, a, uh, a poetic intro to a ridiculous game of test cricket. That's, uh, yes, brilliant word. That um, had, you know, people talk about slow, slow over rates uh, and people talk about, fans getting shortchanged and people talk about uh tours of india lasting a very very long time i think we barely got a full day's worth of test cricket across the two sorry a full test worth of cricket across the two matches uh we had less than two days worth of cricket uh in in this test match uh very much with a slow 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 quick uh approach and i think what uh, what Indy been able to do to to make a result of this is pretty remarkable, and there are very few other times in India's Test history where they have been able to even contemplate doing this, let alone actually pull it off uh, against anyone. Uh, and you know, Bangladesh were also trying to win this game. They were also playing with invention, and they were playing with. Uh, with an eye on trying to hurt India rather than trying to slow them down or trying to make an eventual defeat less uh, less embarrassing. Uh, and it was after three days where, frankly, this uh, anyone could have been forgiving for this for this game, sort of floating out of their memories uh, and and then concentrating on the week ahead. Uh, we got a modern mini classic. Yeah, that's a great way to describe it. Um, and I think yeah, it's important what you said about Bangladesh. They weren't just trying to hold in there. They were they were going for for some kind of uh, result. Um, I, should, I mean, where should we start with this? Because the 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 play, should we say, the, the performance was quite emphatic. Um, Maybe we should start with the administration, primarily because uh, Mr. Shukla was just so front and center on the TV screens. Um, whilst I think it was uh, DK who said, I think he said something like 35 overs were bowled um, over the last two days, um, you know, not including the first morning, which is quite insane. Well, that, um, so it's th- it was 35 overs across the first three days. Oh, sorry, across the first three days. Across right. the first three days. So uh, Bangladesh resumed on day four at 107 for three or 35 overs. Yes, uh, Rajiv Shukla, who is a BCCI vice president and uh, just happens uh, to be from Kanpur, uh, was... Happens to be, isn't he the head of the UP um, Cricket Association? Yes, I'm using happens advisedly. <laughs> uh, right. uh, in, the way that, uh, in the way that the BCCI, uh, or the former BCCI secretary now... Uh, uh, president of the ICC happens to be the son of the home minister um mm. a lot of things happen in india uh, yeah the um yeah he he was he was out there defending uh his patch uh saying uh things along the lines of uh well, let's not go along the lines of let me actually find uh the the quote so this was on uh Friday evening, so uh, sorry, Saturday evening. This is at the end of day, in the end two. of day three. Uh, Saturday was day two. 
yeah, sorry. So it's the end of the uh, yes, end of day two. Sorry. Uh, the history suggests that no match has been abandoned here in Kanpur. There are many venues in the world where, because of the rains, matches have been abandoned. So here for two days, the match couldn't take place. I don't think there should be too much hue and cry. <laughs> Uh, he blamed the fact that the Uttar Pradesh state government owned the, owned the ground. Uh, although, however, the stadium itself uh, is the responsibility of the of the UP state uh, association. Uh, he, <laughs> yeah. he So there's a lot of finger pointing. Uh, you know, the, there's three Spider-Men, but all in those ill-fitting white short-sleeved shirts with, uh, with pens in the top pocket and ink stains. That all administrators love wearing. Uh, the he he ended by saying, "Sometimes it happens, though we all pray to Lord Indra not to rain. But you know it happens, and it happens throughout the world. So why unnecessarily Kanpur and Green Park is being blamed for something which is in nature's hands?" <coughs> uh, so that was that was Shukla Uncle uh, and his and his take on uh, on things about the fact that yes, there was a lot of overnight rain uh, at times. There's a, there's a few uh, things. But to... There wasn't actually very much rain throughout the actual hours of play in days, days two and three. And during the course of this game, we saw lords go from uh, absolute deluge to playing in a couple of hours. I, I understand, and you know, for all the talk of heritage grounds, and yes, Kampur is an old ground. Lords is also an old ground, and uh, is also in a slightly confusing ownership situation. Um, so. And potentially going to be an Asda, so. Uh, yes, if if, uh, if certain senior cricket writers uh, in in certain uh, now paywalled cricket magazines have their way. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So all of the so that's what it was for the first three days. It was uh, you know people talking about lost test world test championship points and people talking about drainage and why can't you hire an army of underpaid people to cover the ground in in tarpaulins like they do in Sri Lanka uh, and roofs on stadiums and isn't it a shame the good people of Kanpur couldn't <clears> have any Sunday uh, cricket for their for their Sunday and, uh, you know, bureaucratic blame games. And then suddenly the sun came out and for and then we had what, 140 overs across two days of really damn good cricket. Yeah, I'm going to pick you up on a couple of things that Chuklanko said. Firstly, blaming Lord Indra for this is a bit harsh because I don't think he would have given Lord Indra any credit had it worked out well. Um, he, he appears to be saying that Lord Indra either didn't direct anyone, didn't didn't leave a forwarding address in his out of office or was or simply was too busy or that... Uh, or or, or either, that, either that or he's, or he's inadvertently revealed that the BCCI are out of favour with Lord Indra, uh, in which case something must be done. Yeah, that's that's a highly worrying situation. Um, if if the BCCI can't yeah, it, handle that kind of situation, yeah, that kind of B upper management, the the BCCI don't have many willing allies here in the terrestrial realm. So you know you can't go alienating your uh, your support base like this. Yeah, keep your div does on site. That's just generally the way things work. Um, yeah, and, and he should be able to manage upwards. <sighs> Look, if you wanted to have it in UP. Lucknow is somewhere that uh, is, you know, there are a fair few test matches played. It's a bigger ground. Um, it's not an excuse, I don't think, that um, you couldn't manage the drainage. And if, if you if you couldn't have an army of under, underpaid people to, to cover in tarpaulin, at least you could have had them to, to mop it all up, um, act some kind of, with some super soaker device. Uh, so that was a whole shambles. And, and I say this because on podcast um, we've obviously acknowledged, and um, this is again a topic for the future. We will, we are going to talk about um, how Jay Shah got his job, but the things he's done with it. And last week we were giving them credit um, because the, uh, with regards to pensions for older cricketers, you know, who when a time when there wasn't the money in the game um, and, and kind of a lifeline for them, and other things like eventually getting the women's IPL. So. We're not one of these podcasts who are constantly slagging the BCCI off um, or anyone because actually there's a balance with everything. But in this case, it is absolutely our right to criticise them because this was, I mean, had India lost points and, and not and failed to, to qualify for the, uh, the World Test Final, the World Test Championship Final, um, it would have been 
a cock up similar to the the abomination of a bum underbud, I call it, um, the, the World Cup final last year. Um, it's unforgivable. Like they, and it's, it reminds me, and I suppose it's, it's just maybe indicative of where India is right now in its development as a whole. That it's it's progressing, it's doing well at certain things, but there is just certain things that needs improve on, and it just isn't there yet. Um, and and maybe getting drainage and being able to pick the right kind of test stadiums as one of them. Yeah, look, I don't I don't mind particularly the idea of uh, rotating. Test matches around different Sorry, venues. Can I just add? I think I think also though that's despite this being unseasonal rain as well. But even then, that I don't think that's necessarily an excuse. Sorry. No, no. And look, a lot of grounds around the world are going to have to um, to cope with the fact that rain forecasts and historic uh, rain maxima uh, are going to become fairly useless quite soon in a lot of places because of climate change. Yeah. Um, which is um, which is a worrying time for a lot of teams. I mean, just here in the you can, listeners, we will get onto the actual cricket, but we we do need to discuss this because um, pitches are important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, particularly when they're underwater uh, yeah. or, or not underwater and and no one and not being tended to. Uh, Where's that in the UK? Worcestershire gets flooded every year, doesn't it? Yeah, and Worcester have had to talk about, um, but it, it's much much worse. I think it's it was something that happened every now and again, but it's becoming almost an annual occurrence now. It's uh, it's seriously accelerated in the last few years to the point where Worcestershire are going to have to quite likely move our way from New Road, uh, the ground they've been at for a long time, because it's just not going to be sustainable. They can't keep foot in the foot in the cost of cleaning it up from flooding every single year. Maybe um, they can do some kind of knowledge share partnership with Kanpur about how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, if you add. If you throw in the the Lord's drainage, the the new road cleanup crew, and the Sri Lankan Sorry, ground, I thought stuff, you meant I thought you meant the Lord's drainage about in no, the, no 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 no. <laughs> you actually were talking about that. No 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 no. Uh, insert the name of your <laughs> least favorite city for wherever the Lord's drainage is. Um, but if you insert the drainage at Lord's, the Worcestershire uh, ground staff cleanup crew, and the Sri Lankan tarpaulin wallas, and you would never ever get. Uh, days lost to wet outfields ever again. Uh, so yes, uh, another something that must be done. Um, but <coughs> the 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 lack of responsibility taken for uh, ensuring that your grounds can recover from bad weather, the palming it off onto other people, the hiding behind the fact that it's an old ground. And uh, saying other places lose days to uh, to weather and rain. It's not just Kanpur. Why is everyone picking on Kanpur? Um, the the covering of backsides rather than the taking responsibility and actually doing something about it, or at least trying to do something uh, about it, um, which there was no visible sign of for for some time, um, does not reflect well on the upper management of the BCCI and the Uttar Pradesh Cricket Association and whoever else was involved in in the fact that we had to wait for so long and that India and Bangladesh had to be quite so proactive to actually make this a game worth, worth talking about. But once we did actually get some play, we... India seemed to know exactly what to do, kind of instinctively, and yeah. exactly how to, <laughs> how they were going to how they were going to achieve it. Um, but with with bat and with ball, um, you know, a lot of teams would have nece- would have thought, okay, try and you know, the first point, try and take Bangladesh wickets quickly. Fine, that much is obvious. A lot of teams might have then thought, right, we'll try and bat through into tomorrow and bat once, try and get one hundred and fifty ahead, and try and get uh, two hundred and something ahead and try and bat once the risk with that is that then Bangladesh can slow up the game and you might end up running out of time India didn't do that India decided to just bat as quickly as they could and trust themselves to take 10 more wickets uh on a pitch that was lively uh had been sweating under the covers for for a while um where 
with a bowling attack that was well rounded that ended up being you know a lot of people thought that uh you know black soil pitch and pick three spinners it ended up being the completely the right attack with the three seam bowlers um for for the wicket um and a wicket that is uh going to take seam movement is obviously something that Jadeja is going to operate well on and Ashwin is Ashwin um so yeah. mm-hmm. you and then you had the batters to, uh, able to both uh, plan and execute scoring beautifully irresponsibly fast especially yeah. yesterday uh you know fastest ever team 50 100 150 and 200 um I think, uh, 250 as well or was, it was it was close uh i don't know if it was 250 i'm seeing certainly cer- things. Cer- certainly the other certainly, two yeah other certainly, up, certainly up to certainly up to 200 um which which is pretty remarkable um you know yeah. changing the batting order so Richard Punt comes in at number 4 okay it didn't work <laughs> Uh, it, but, it felt like it felt like twenty like uh, IPL Rishabh, where he's kind of is a bit slower versus his normal Test batting. Yeah, it, the, but it was absolutely the it, it was absolutely the right thing to do, and and just the way that you talk <clears> about T Twenty, you know, Roy Sharma just clicked into, you know, he he switched gears internally, um, and was almost making a point of going out there and trying to hit trying to hit sixes you know hitting is yeah. i think he's only the fourth person ever to hit his first two balls of an innings in test cricket for six yeah it's insane. Uh, it, it and remind- then, he, then he hit another couple and and jesval showed again uh how how dangerous he can be uh and how um how hard he is to stop scoring uh, yeah and it was it was it was pretty pretty remarkable to watch yesterday and and even today you know, you lose a few wickets and you might think that you uh, go into your shell. And we've seen teams do that before. And India just kept on attacking, uh, thinking that they that they would not be able to, uh, they wouldn't be able to lose enough wickets quickly enough uh, to to give Bangladesh a real a real sniff. And once they got once they got one partnership, the game was over. And so it proved. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, remarkable is exactly um, the word. It, India kind of, I guess. Look, they, they they thought we need to put time back in this game. Um, mm-hmm. Roy Sharma's a, a approach reminded me a little bit about how we played in the World Cup last year, and also the the, the one day, the fifty over one, and the twenty twenty one, where it was. He, it wasn't about personal milestones. He he knows. Look, you know, I'm I'm getting old. This is my last chance of doing something half decent. So he would come in and just start slogging. He gets out. He gets out. But he's he's setting a a strong platform for the team, and at the end of the day, he got what twenty three off eleven or something. I, I just set the tone, and suddenly the rest of the boys that like, hold on, and I think uh, Ashwin spoke about it at the end. One of the guys, I think it was Ashwin who spoke about it at the, uh, in in the in the presentation was like uh, actually probably Jussie, um, where you know we had the speech from Rohit about whatever, go get the wickets and come back. But then he came in and hit six and then hit another one, and we're like, right, okay. We got to do something about this, um, because of recency bias. The inevitable comparisons with Basbol will come up, but it reminded me of of Varun Sewag, um, and particularly we spoke about this on on the chat uh, on, on our WhatsApp group. Two thousand eight, about a, a, f- a few weeks after the uh, horrific attacks in Mumbai, um, where the first test was cancelled, um, and and I think the England team went back, and then they came back for the match in Chennai. Um, where England were on top, like all the way through. I think it was up to the fourth day, if memory serves me correct. From the Seba came out, just tonked it around, and he. Put, and I remember KP clearly saying afterwards, like he put time back in the game. He goes, "What do you do, like when a guy plays like that?" And it just reminded me of that. There, there was only one way to put time back in the game. And Rohit Sharma said, "Like if we got out, we got out." I think maybe they were also backing themselves that if, um, if it's a draw, it's a draw. But also. If they do get out for anything less than two hundred, they back themselves to get Sri Lanka out. Uh, sorry, Bangladesh out cheaply enough to then come and chase um, on the final day. I think that that was that was part of it as well. Um, you know, we've got to, we've got to bring this up. But what do you make of the comparisons with Basball? I mean, is that is that even there? Because this, like, I'll give you my opinion. Basball is an approach pretty much to everything. This was more adaptive, and they're like, "All right, well, this time we'll play like this." They're not going to do that every time. 
No, I mean, there's a lot of talk about what Basball is and isn't, and even if it's a, if it if it's a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you know, it, it has the way England to play has changed in the in the what two hundred years now that it's been that Brendan McCullum and Ben Stokes have been in charge, um, and you know, like all philosophies, you might go a little bit. <clears throat> you might have to. Uh, you might have to overcorrect in order to actually instill yourself with the with the belief that you can do it. You might have to uh, take it a little bit further than than it really needs to than it needs to go. It also has to be seen in the context of it's a reaction to what came before, where England became very timid over mm-hmm. over eighteen months in in Test cricket. But that's a that's a separate um, discussion. It did remind me a little bit of in, of England in Pakistan uh, right. towards the end of twenty twenty two, where on some very very flat pitches. England had to bat incredibly quickly to give their bowlers time to to bowl Pakistan out on some unresponsive pitches. So there, the time is being taken out by the pitch. Here, it's being taken out by the weather and the conditions. Um, so it and 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 that's what you know. That's what baseball, if you want to call it, that's what attacking batting is. Is it's the idea that. And you know you can take this back to Australia, making a real point of trying to score uh, over four and over uh, in their first batting innings to try and give their bowlers time to uh, to win the game. You could argue how much time Warner, McGrath, and Gillespie and Lee needed, but <laughs> um, but you know th- those were you know the early the early to mid two thousands and the and then the the Australian teams under Ponting and Clark. You know those were some quite flat pitches they were playing on largely. Mm. Um, and and a four bowler attack that couldn't necessarily take the, um, you know they didn't have an all rounder to take those extra overs for them, uh, so it's it, it is a tactical approach of your of your gifts and your abilities to um, not just technical but you're also you then mental you 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 stop the opposition thinking about taking wickets, you yeah. stop the opposition thinking about winning the game, uh, although Bangladesh. I think with the bat, with the bat, you know, they got criticised for some over attacking batting. I think um, by by commentators and even their own coach Chandigarhatra Singh uh, post match was talking about, um, but he 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 was talking about it. But he was talking about it in the context of they just sort of executed it better, um, which I think is right. I think that um, this Bangladesh were never really in with a chance of winning this game, but they all but they. I think they just do deserve some credit for not just trying to spoil and not just trying to slow India down. Uh, you know, the way Mominal batted yesterday was terrific. Yeah. Uh, brilliant, brilliant 100. Shadman Islam played really well today. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mehdi Hassan Miraz in both innings with the, uh, with the ball and a little bit with the bat as well. They gave it a really good go. Yeah, they, they simply weren't, unfortunately, good enough. Uh, and India yeah. were that India were were that much better, particularly with the uh, with the ball. You know, all of the bowlers um, can contributed at, at various points. And if you've through, got a guy who match, made, if you've got a guy who made a century against this Indian attack, I mean, you, you didn't just turn up for the fun of it. You, yeah, definitely I mean, a lot of credit to you there. Yeah, they were, they were in a decent position at lunch yesterday. Hmm. Um, they then lost four for six um, to mostly just just Bumrah, which can happen. Yep. Uh, and you know, India took a couple of really, really good catches. Uh, Catching was great. Yeah, I, I, you know, on that, I want to say I think Siraj's catch, which mm. one I think catch of the match or something like that, wasn't as good as Sharma's for me because it, for me, it's a bit. I mean, maybe this is being harsh, but it's more of him not judging the ball correctly, but then covering it with a with a good jump. Whereas Sharma's was closer, and it was more instinctive. He stuck his hand out, and he's not known for that kind of athleticism. Um, yeah, I think Rohit Sharma's catch was better. I, I'd probably go along with that. Jaiswal took a really good catch uh, in the yep. slips in Bangladesh's first innings mm-hmm. uh, as well, which I which I which I throw in there. Yeah, uh, Siraj, um, a little bit like the Ben Stokes catch in the in the 2019 World Cup, slightly misjudged the catch and then got himself out of it with a brilliant bit of athleticism. Yeah, um, and also it was a very very badly miscued shot by Shakib Al Hassan. Um, <laughs> Mushrikud, who who hit that shot to uh, to Rohit Sharma in the in the first innings. Let me get that. Uh, let me get that right. It uh, was where have I got it. Uh, 
uh, Litton Das, sorry. Litton Litton Das hit that quite well. He was trying to hit that there. uh, And and Rohit Sharma could have slightly baited him into the shot. Yeah, I would would class Rohit slightly above uh, Suraj's just because um, Suraj probably could have made that catch a little easier on himself. Mm. Um, But there was a real... There was a good, really good marriage of intensity and ideas with India with the ball in that first Bangladesh innings. Uh, yeah. And the second, to, and the second to be fair, um, although Bangladesh weren't, didn't play as well. Um, it made it look as though Bangladesh were just trying to react to whatever India were doing. And it's hard to be that reactive uh, for that long, uh, particularly when you're up against a better team. Certainly, in, the, in India's first innings, they got a bit of stick from commentators, even their own, about how what, the, the field was spread out. But at a certain point, you kind of need to do that. And actually, towards as the the ball slowed down, that kind of made sense because um, you know, there were a few catches on the boundaries. I think Pant definitely. I think Gill as well. Yeah, I mean, like India were trying to hit sixes uh, yeah. by the end, so it becomes a catching position. Um, yeah. Nathan Lyon has just been giving a masterclass to Sky Sports in a which. I, urge anyone to look up it's a four part they've released four episodes of it's brilliant and he mm. he's t- been talking about how boundary catches are like uh are to, to spinners what third fourth slips and gullies are to fast bowlers they're catching positions um because that's like where the ball is likely to go and also and frankly you know jesswell hits three fours in the first over rohit hits four of his first six balls for six there aren't many captains who wouldn't put the field back at that point to try and slow India down a little bit like I don't that that seemed a very harsh criticism yeah in the second innings um well it was this morning um it was quite funny they had a a catcher for Roy Chema how he got out sweeping trying to get a six two balls later Gill's in he actually hit it in the same position hit it for a six and they didn't have a catcher there so so it's, sometimes you know um they've obviously brought the field in for the new guy and he's he's gone and done what his captain did essentially two balls earlier and got got the runs. So um, yeah, you need to. I guess sometimes you just you just play it as it goes, and you yeah. You know, you there's only so much you can do when you're defending ninety five. Yeah, right. And that's that's part of it. And in the second innings, Bangladesh got bundled out. Um, in the first innings, they made a a good fist of it. Um, but but you know this attack had been rested. Uh, had, I think they've been playing pickleball as well. I heard um, that, that Gotti and um, one of the other coaches were beating Gill and I think Pant, someone, Gill and someone, I think Pant, they would lose, they were getting beaten in pickleball by the coaching staff on the, on the Sunday. I think that wouldn't, a pickleball racket is quite um, wide and quite soft. I don't think the beating would hurt as much as with some other implements. Well, yeah, I don't think it was, lit- I mean, I think uh, we mean in, in the sport, not. Not physically. I don't think they, mm-hmm. they use kind of Indian edu- Indian school system punishment in the cricket team anymore, I don't think. But I wouldn't... Spiked, um... spiked chuppels. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. I didn't, I didn't realise that the pickleball paddle obsession among coaching staff had spread to India because um, yeah. uh, there aren't many sort of top football coaches now who don't play uh, pickleball and, and, and paddle and stuff like that. Um, I think it's what... Um, I think it might even have been what Stuart... What James Anderson... What James Anderson, I think, and Stuart Broad played paddle i think the morning of anderson's last test or something it's become a real thing uh here but yeah um boom rubbled magnificently at the start of that bangladesh second innings uh it was really unlucky not to get not to get more wickets uh we saw bangladesh didn't quite know what to do towards the end of their uh towards the end of day four you know the night they send the night watcher in and then he has a wild hacker ushwin and gets bold um mm. there was some reviews that weren't really on that they got a little bit scrambled and, and that and that can and that can happen uh they lost Mominal who batted so well in the in the first innings um that I think the the loss of uh of Najmul trying to reverse sweep Jadeja and losing his leg stump getting bowled around his legs uh was quite quite significant and when you've got a pitch that's where there's some seam movement and Jadeja's uh, knack of uh, being able to bowl at pace, get the odd one to turn, get ones not to turn, um, makes him very, very difficult. Um, it's 
it's been a long time. You know, we're, we're well past the era of uncovered pictures. You know, I don't remember the era of uncovered pictures at all, but you read accounts of playing Derek Underwood on a on a drying uncovered pitch, and it uh, there, Jadeja has a little bit of that uh, to him. Um, Boomer finally got his uh, his his little bit of luck uh, when, or finally, uh, his really good delivery started started getting wickets. Um, and you know, he's, he's the, the last. Obviously, when they extended lunch this morning for the for, mm. for the second innings, and, and the, it looked he, he bowled a couple down the leg side. It looked like it was certainly get getting to him. Is what they were saying in the commentary box, and I thought he's just trying to find it. And then what did he do? Blow out the middle peg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and Bangladesh went from ninety one for three to ninety four for seven. Yeah. Um. And then the game was pretty much, uh, pretty much done. Shadman, I thought batted beautifully uh, at times. Some really, really de- uh, delightful. Uh, uh, shots, but um, you know, Akash Deep did his did did his thing. Um, he took some wickets, to hit a couple of consecutive sixes as well. Yeah, I mean, a couple of big, a couple of big hits towards the end of that. Uh, he got, that, he got that, those that of us who miss Umesh Yadav kind of you know a little bit misty eyed. He was like, oh, second coming of Umesh. Mm. Yeah, uh, remains to be seen how good a boundary fielder he is. I mean, uh, something something I always enjoyed with uh, Umesh, who had to be restrained from throwing the ball over the stadium. Uh, at times, a, a absolute <laughs> catapult of an arm, but yeah. the momentum is so overused. But the the force was with India quite quickly uh, today, mm. um, and it it was a slightly more low key version of what India had done in England uh, a few years ago, where they they sort of suffocate the opposition. Um, it. it it's a way we haven't seen India have to win in India for a while in, in this run of 16 straight uh, series wins. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it shows, you know, again, we talked about this at the end of the first test match and others have talked about it as well. Like, you need everything to go for you in in India now to avoid losing to, to India in India. And Bangladesh didn't get anywhere near enough going for them or play anywhere near anywhere near well enough um and the fact of india proactively going against type and going out of their comfort zones to force to force a win is is something we haven't really seen uh i guess just because you don't lose huge chunks of games to rain in india uh, yeah particularly, you know we even even you know there's again there's only so much you can say about a chase of 95 but you know, you saw Virat Kohli coming down the track to, to spinners, which is not something we've seen in Test cricket for uh, for a while. Hitting um, a few sweeps as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we, uh, and it, it, if if this is a sign of greater flexibility and adaptability, then I think that's that that's very welcome. Um, uh, India being too strong for Bangladesh. Uh, who played quite well in patches was about how we'd expected this series to go. Yeah. Um, but the, the circumstances of this win, you know, just to what we will move on to, to other, other matters, but um, including some milestones for Jadeja, which we haven't even talked about yet, but yesterday yeah. over 400 runs and 17 wickets in a day. Um, that doesn't happen in India very often. No, it just doesn't. Do you want to talk about the Jadeja then quickly? Yeah, three hundred three thousand club. Um, so he's what the second fastest in terms of matches to get there uh, after both them. Uh, second highest difference between his batting and bowling averages of the players in that club. Um, and isn't he one of the highest left arm left arm spinner uh, wicket takers as well, or something like that? I saw some uh, kind of table pop up. Yeah, so it's Hedarth and Vittori ahead of him. Yeah, and he's not. Um, he's about sixty wickets behind Vittori. He's he's quite behind. I think Hedarth is what four hundred and thirty six or something. Four like thirty three. Yeah, so he's right. um, he's not. He's, pro- he's not likely to uh, to get there. No. Um, in in terms of just one final sort of uh, illustrative stat, fifteen players have taken fifteen hundred plus runs and taken one hundred and fifty wickets. Jadeja has a bigger. <laughs> difference between his batting and bowling averages in the first innings than any of them so it, it shows i think what that shows primarily is how 
Jadeja can almost get into India's 11 as a top seven batter, even without his bowling. And in certain yeah. circumstances, will actually be used as that. I don't think he is quite in India's top seven pure batter, but he's he's closer than most people we think of as, as true all-rounders. Um, and, you know, we talked a lot about Ashwin after the first test, rightly so, and, and his ridiculous numbers. Um, Jadeja's numbers are... And his his impact and his uh, utility and the luxury that he gives captains is is pretty special as well. Hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, he's, he's, and he's been doing it for a while <laughs> as well. So there's you know there's a well I guess the numbers wouldn't be there otherwise. But um, it's not what I what I mean by that is it's not been kind of bitty. Sometimes you have players who will write for you know for, for fits and then they'll fall off for a while and then maybe come back. He's generally been there throughout i mean um sometimes to our disappointment when ashwin gets benched for him in a world test final but that is that is what it is um did you see this stat i, I don't know if it's just a meme some people sometimes you see things but apparently and we've got to mention this for our friends at really apparently ashwin's got the same amount of man of the match awards as really theron man of the series yes man of the series sorry yes 11 man of the series awards as uh as the great morally yeah um that's quite something and he's also got his own hindi youtube channel now as well especially you know i remember last couple of weeks ago i was talking about lamenting not being able to speak tamil he's kind of listened and thought you know what for this much i will talk in hindi Amma. thank you for that also yeah, by the yeah. way trilingual sorry, yeah trilingual um, trilingual youtube channels even professional broadcasters don't do that it's something else it's something else um talking of which bangladesh wikikeeper kept saying ayo and i always thought that was like a south indian thing and I hope he wasn't kind of culturally appropriating or, or, or kind of trolling in any way, because that was slightly annoying for me. I was like, no, this is not you. You don't speak like this. Don't do that. Maybe, that he, was just just, maybe he was just trying to, you know how sometimes if you're, I, I'm, I'm not multilingual, so I can't speak to this personally, but um, I've, I've heard of players who will deliberately sledge in a language they know the opposition can understand. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Uh, also, L- Lytton Das is one of the very few Hindus in the, in the uh in the bangladesh side so there may have been so there might have been a, a a cultural background thing that he was uh that he was going with there maybe maybe i think the other guys i think generally they understand hindi a lot anyway like in the first test and we completely forgot to talk about this last week but um Kohli was talking to uh to shaki balasan and um he talked about uh the bowler he goes does he think he's malinga he said he said something uh i think nelly Mali or something like that um does he think he's malinga and then he said in hindi yorkarpa yorka dara to shakib al hassan who ob- obviously understood because you wouldn't speak to me in the otherwise right um maybe because they yeah and, and you know as, as joke as joked about in the first episode um you know if you want to speak bad bengali just replace everything in every vowel with an o yeah, and an S with an SH. I was thinking that Shudman's real name might be Sadman. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> in Hindi. Um, so, I mean, look, uh, a great performance. Um, a bit like us, we've kind of warmed into it. They've warmed into it, um, warmed up. Um, India won the series. Uh, they've retained uh, Sheikh Casino as well. Um, T20s start on Sunday. We'll talk about that next week because there's not a lot to be said really for that for now. Um, there's some other stuff going on with regards to Delhi Capitals buying something in Hampshire, which we can touch on very quickly. Um, I know we've got to knock it on the head very soon, and then we'll just talk about the World Cup, the Women's World Cup. Yeah, so uh, the the owners of, of Delhi Capitals, uh, GWR Holdings, have bought a controlling stake in Hampshire. Uh, Rob Bransgrove, the chair of Hampshire, was uh, GMR. Sorry, uh, uh, were uh, Rob Bransgrove were doing the rounds yesterday uh, in the media. Um, this is the first time that uh, an English county has been majority owned by uh, by private by foreign private investors. Hampshire did have a deal with the with the Rajasthan Royals uh, in their old guys before the before the um, fixing scandal, uh, but that was that was more of a sort of branding tie in um it it seems quite likely now uh that um that essentially the parent company of the parent company who own uh who have teams in 
in the IPL, the Delhi Capitals and various other teams around the world. This is quite likely an attempt to buy into the 100. We don't know that as as yet, uh, yeah. but we do know that they are... Uh, the chair of the group said that they are keen on trying to get a majority stake in the Southern Brave. Um, it, it, the, B, the ECB are trying to get foreign investment in the 100, um, a move that hasn't yet happened and might have to be delayed a little bit, but this seems like the long the long game towards that. It's interesting that it was Hampshire, not uh, a county who've won much recently. They do have a test match ground, but it's not a major city. It's a ground that has some issues in terms of access. Uh, it doesn't get a huge amount of test cricket uh against some but it does have apart um, from that one that was lost that should have been one um when india played there a few years ago well anyway, i mean that, that, i mean i mean that was <laughs> that was that was because it's got a hotel on site i, I, I went to a wedding a, there i went to a wedding in that hotel yeah oh, it, it, it's got a <laughs> it, it's got a hotel on site um which which makes it um that's an extra revenue stream uh mm. frankly and the and it'll be really interesting to see how uh, how this develops everyone seems very positive about it at the uh at the moment um and we we are we are told that uh that infrastructure development which hampshire have done over the years was a big part of the deal and that the the southern brave is something that they are keen on but not uh but wasn't a a deal breaker uh as it were there's also a 18 hole golf course very near uh mm. very nearby it's, it's funny you mentioned the, the golf course because actually i was going to just about to say that peterson was uh well apparently helped to broker the deal because he's obviously Ham- hampshire player and also played delhi um and is known for his golf so actually maybe those three things combined and probably why he wanted to yeah have it I, all. i'm sure there's i'm sure there's many uh an ipl winning strategy that's been hatched on a golf course um i mean in fact we know a lot of the Major decisions around the current England team have been made uh, before, during, or, or after golf. It's um, just as much of a of a factor in cricket networking as it is in in any other uh, yeah. form of networking. Absolutely right. Uh, before we wrap it up, let's quickly throw forward to the women's T Twenty World Cup, which begins uh, on Thursday. Um, first games will be Bangladesh, Scotland. Um, and then also Pakistan, Sri Lanka, uh, Bangladesh, Scotland is in the morning, um, Pakistan, Sri Lanka in the afternoon, um, and then uh, a few more games, South Africa, West Indies, um, and then India, New Zealand on the Friday. So thoughts on the World Cup, and we will delve into this properly next week once it's started. Um, um, but do you have any thoughts, any predictions? I The question with every uh major women's tournament is who can stop australia they have lost a few series recently uh Mm -hmm. they also lost a test match to india earlier this year and england played very well against them uh in the white ball lay the women's ashes last uh last summer uh, drew both of those uh or won both of those series uh and and ended up drawing the ashes uh which is a multi-format in the in on the women's side uh India are in a group with Australia, New Zealand, and Pakistan, and Sri Lanka, which is the definitely the harder group. Sri Lanka have been terrific uh, over the last few years. Uh, won the Women's Asia Cup. Sri Lanka, Pakistan was a, a classic in that semi final of that of that tournament. So that's a that's got a little bit of spice uh, resting on it. New Zealand and Pakistan have been very poor over the last few years. Uh, it will be a surprise if it wasn't Australia and India to to go through from that group. A huge shock, frankly. Uh, and then in the other group, Bangladesh, England, Scotland, South Africa, and the West Indies. Uh, England have the highest win percentage of any of the qualified teams since the last World Cup. Uh, only Australia have scored faster. They've got an attack that's really well suited to these conditions with those three spinners, Charlie Dean, uh, Sophie Eccleston, and Sarah Glenn. Um, and South Africa have been have really dropped off since uh, getting to the final of the last T20 World Cup where they were uh, where they were terrific. I think one thing in India's favour is they play Australia last in that group. Uh, so that could end up being not a quarterfinal, but almost like a placement game if things go to go to plan, obviously. Um, India have a few things to, to sort out, particularly the, the batting lineup is extremely flexible. 
now to the point where we don't quite know where like Deepthi Sharma is going to be batting. And I think that India have fallen into the trap of having her batting too low recently when she is such a dangerous hitter. Uh, we saw her get London Spirit over the line in the 100, hitting that six off the last ball of the game to win the game. Um, she she is, for want of a better word, clutch mm-hmm. uh, with, with, with bat and ball. I like Jimmy Rodriguez in the middle order. Um, I think that allowing you to get uh, Rodriguez, Mundana, and Shafali, Ver- Shafali Verma into the same uh, into the same team is, is excellent. And um, if these pitches in the UAE, where it's obviously been moved from from Bangladesh because of the uprising essentially that happened in in Bangladesh uh, not that long ago, um, you would you would think India would uh, would profit from uh, from that, but. It's very hard to see the winner coming from beyond uh, India, Australia, and and England, um, which, given the group setup, means that you would expect uh, England to top their group and play probably India in the semi final, uh, and then us the the closing pack in terms of England and India. Uh, are closer to Australia than they have been. But Australia in the warm-up game the other day had Annabelle Sutherland, the most expensive player in Women's Premier League history, who is a test double centurion. They had her batting at number eight, <laughs> which, yeah, that's pretty hard to that's pretty hard to bet against, uh, to be honest. Uh, as you say, it starts on Thursday, India's first game. Uh, against a New Zealand team who've been serially pummeled by England home and away uh, mm. recently uh, is on Friday. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing uh, to mention is that in this tournament, um, I believe that the prize money has been increased, which is actually a great thing for the women's game. Um, and I'm not sure, I don't think it's on par with the men's, but it's, it's not far off. Um, I think it's certainly doubled the winner's uh, the overall winner's um, fee has doubled um, from last year, which is quite remarkable. So that's a, that's a good thing for, for the game, particularly the women's yeah. game. I also, I would, I would say watch out for um, Scotland are in their first T20 World Cup, beat uh, beat Ireland in the in the qualifier, and, and Scotland have some some players well worth watching for. Abdaha Maksud, who made herself a kind of folk here in the first season of the 100, the Bryce sisters, both very, very good players. It is a shame that Ireland aren't in it because they're probably the most improved team in women's cricket. Mm. Uh, right now, this is the last time it'll be a ten-team tournament. It's going to be expanded for uh, for for future editions. Um, so uh, I would uh, they'd be it'll be a, it'll be a huge surprise if they got out of the uh, out of the group. But I think they could um, they could make a run of it against uh, uh, against one of South Africa, the West Indies, or Bangladesh, uh, and make things uh, potentially interesting for what I assume is a battle for second place behind England in that group. Great. Well, uh, thank you for that. Um, Well, we'll talk more about that next week on the next episode. Um, By that time, there'll be about nine games, I think, will have been played. uh, and The 10th one will probably be in progress. Uh, Knuckle, thank you for your uh, fantabulous insights this week. We missed you last week, but I'm glad you were here. Uh, Unfortunately, Curran wasn't, um, and Rudanka has still not got his priorities Mm -hmm. straight. Apparently choosing coursework over being here. I don't know what that's about. Um, we're going to leave it there. The aunties uh, will be so proud. The aunties will be so proud, yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to leave it there. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you're watching us on YouTube um, and hitting follow wherever you get this on Spotify or the or Apple app, podcast app or anything else. And make sure you tell everyone about this podcast. Kumble Corner with two Ks. Oh, and also check us out on all the socials. Just search Comblay Corner, obviously with two Ks. Bye for now.